What about the skills that you need to know and really get great at as a behavioral scientist? So let's dive into this one next. The first and foremost is just very much being a master at really diving in and understanding the behavioral science principles. And specifically there, it's about the application. So, you know, I, I don't want to underemphasize under, understanding the theory in depth, certainly, and the nuance of it, absolutely critical. And what I would pair with that is just that ability to apply it. The ability, one thing I encourage people to do as they're kind of becoming or interested in be, being budding behavioral scientists, if you're interested in the applied side, you should be training your brain at all times to think about what is the application here? So you're taking an Uber to go to a meeting. You're calling an Uber. You are looking at the Uber app. What principles are they using on you right this minute? Take a screenshot of that. You should be able to very quickly identify what's going on in the screen, what principles are being used. And then you should also be thinking about well, wait, are the, is this effective? What, sh, what would I do, be doing differently? Take the screenshot, take some notes for yourself. If you were to run an intervention, uh, what would that be? If you had, let's say you just had to make, one, you got one change to do. Let's say you got three conditions to do. What are they? For each of these, you should be able to kind of articulate a theory behind why you think this change should be made. And that is such a core part of this work. If you're interested in applied work, and if you really want to get next level on it is, you know, the, the, the practical side of this is around the constraints. So great, you came up with a big swing recommendation that would completely change the design of the app. And that's wonderful. And we have those conversations with our clients sometimes like this core functionality of how you've designed this actually doesn't align with how our brains operate. And if you want to really change behavior, then do these this one big change. A lot of times though, this also means working with constraints saying, okay, maybe in the future we can launch this big change, but for right now, these are some immediate small changes you can make. And so being able to understand and speak, speak to kind of both levels of big swing changes, completely reinventing, and that's exciting. And we should, we should push clients on that and there's opportunity there. And then also the slightly smaller level of kind of what are immediate um, lower hanging fruit changes because imagine of course right you're putting yourself in their shoes there's engineering time that's going to take to completely reinvent this i can't put this into this next release of, of of updates but what are ideas that you can do and kind of thinking about those which ones would you push for maybe you can't make all 17 changes that you might recommend if you're going to fight for one of those which is which is that you know kind of understanding the trade-offs this is where you're taking the theory and the knowledge that you have which things you might think have the largest effects, pulling that in and you're bringing it together with the applied context um, and putting those two pieces together. So I think there's a lot of power in that. So next, there's sort of sub-specializations within that. You can get really good at, uh, we have you know, in our team in particular, right? Folks who are even, you know, particularly strong at experimental design or particularly strong at data analysis or particularly strong even at, at mock-ups and Figma and, you know, sort of, it's wonderful to say, I have these theories and I have these ideas of how you might change it. But if you can make a Figma mock-up that can show the client very clearly, we make it come alive, you know, that's another uh, area sort of of sub-specialization within behavioral science. 